Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 158 at scavengerlife.com. Dot com. <laughs> Dot com, that's right. So, Ryan, how are you today? I'm tired. Yeah, I know. Because I packed for two days straight. Yeah. But yeah. that's just the way it goes. Yep. So, yeah, so we came back from L.A. We were two weeks away. I mean, it was weird. I mean, it's kind of crazy that we left at the end of August. Yeah. We're going all September into October. We came home. We stayed home for only five days. And then, and we, then left. we left for another two weeks. So basically, we've been gone for almost three months. Two months. Three two months, months. Three months. Two and a half months. And yeah. So, yeah. It, we're uh, we're glad to be home. Like, we, I love to travel, but whoa. Sometimes it's like, it's a lot of traveling. Yeah. I... I sometimes forget that we, like, have a little house that we love, and... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't forget, but I'm like, oh, yeah, we have this whole other life. But you know what? It's a total luxury problem because I feel like we've been able to do a lot of cool things the past, you know, three months. Like, yeah. Like, everything we've ever talked about, being able to travel, hang out with people we know, meet these new people. Yep. Do cool projects. Possibly do these other cool projects, I mean, or... We're doing them. You yeah. Know, it's cool. And no, it is good. I think coming back from L.A., you know, we were in a pretty nice part of L.A. Yeah. And then we live in a rural, <laughs> kind of depressed area. I don't know if that's the best word. Economically so, depressed. Yeah. Not depressing. Right, not depressing. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's so interesting coming from L.A. where you're hanging out around people who don't really have to worry about every dollar they spend. or Right. You know, it's just so, you know, and then we were staying in a place where like there was TV and we watched television, which we don't usually do. And we were watching, you know, all those like home, whatever, it's renovation shows. Like HGTV. Where it's just like, it's just constant. It's, it's just, just like. That's all that's on. It's like this, the same show over and over again. And it's just all these people, you know, all these like Americans and I guess Canadians. Who yeah. Are, you know, they're buying like. Six hundred thousand dollar homes, and right? They're, they're renovating for a hundred thousand, and it's just like wow. Yeah, just, just the numbers are so crazy, you know, yeah. compared to scavenger style. So I mean, I really give it up to all of us who you know have been able to you know figure out how to live month to month, you know. Yeah. And, uh, for cheap. I like it because you know also being in LA helped me realize how we have we have really broken out of. The wage slaving, you know, yeah, the, the hourly wage life. It's yeah, I mean, know, we're extremely broken out of it. I mean, you know, we're definitely not rich by any means, but I just feel rich because, you know, we make enough money to where we don't have to, yeah, clock in somewhere right. and do that. Yeah, you know? yeah. And trust me, I've had to do that before. Yep, you know? yep. And I can re- remember the worst moments of my life. Where I just remember it'd be like being at a counter somewhere or being at a desk and just thinking like, I'm here. I I, <laughs> I, I have to be like, here. I, to be here. <laughs> I know. Like, there's no, there makes no sense for me to be here, but I have, I have to, to. I cannot leave. Like I'm getting paid for this moment, this yep. time. And, yep. just, and just thinking like, oh. And and there being no option, nothing else. You know? There's nothing yeah. else. Yeah, yep. Well, that's why we love eBay because it lets you break out of that. <coughs> Seriously, like I think it's working by the hour is the most inefficient way to work. Yeah, know? it's pretty bad. Yep. Let's give a what what to all the people out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Who are selling stuff on eBay? You know. Uh, oh, Ryan what? does not have it. Though. Jay. Okay, so let's talk about numbers, which we always like As we to do. always talk, talk about numbers. So this week felt very slow to us. Yeah. You know, it just felt like, you know, we would, I'd wake up in the morning and I was Nothing had sold. Yeah, I'd love to look at my phone because it's like, oh, the, all these things sold. Man, there were many uh, mornings this week where nothing had happened. Yeah, which is kind of depressing. But let's look at our uh, numbers. We made almost $1,400. Yeah. Did this week, like thirteen sixty eight. So that's really averaging about two hundred dollars a day. That's you know? gross. And that's for four fees. So, not including shipping. Right. So I mean that's that's fourteen hundred dollars. We never count our a shipping in our numbers because that money doesn't go into it our It goes pocket. right back to the post office. That's just the items 
that's just the money people so paid for items. So yeah, you know, a 1400, you know, you think 11 is percent for eBay and PayPal fees and then inventory. I mean, you know, let's say you, you know, that's 20 is percent and you walk away with, you know, whatever, $1,200, yeah. $1,100 right. in our It's pocket. not bad, but it's, yeah. I wish it were better. I, I mean, want it to be better. Right. And it's really, you know, it's like we're getting towards the end of October here. You mean it should, our numbers should be much better than yeah. this piece of holiday sales. Yeah. But, you know, it's hard to tell. Is it because there's something wrong with in eBay? I mean, not s- something yeah. wrong, but like eBay, the site isn't as popular. But more than likely, it's just because we just have not been We listed. have not. We've talked about it over yeah. and over. We have not listed it. I listed a handful of items when we were in Amsterdam, <laughs> but pff, that's nothing. I, I mean, think... Would did you say we might have elicited a hundred things since June? I don't. Well, okay, yes, because remember we were at home between June and August. Right. Sorry, my mind went blank. Yeah, no, there was like we. I would... think I did a hundred and fifty. Okay. Remember, we were like, let's keep track, and right. it was about a hundred and fifty. Right. But I mean, so if you think June, like July, it. August, September, now it's the end of October. October. <laughs> so that's five months. So let's say. It was 300 items. I mean, that's like, that's that's amazing nothing. for us. I yeah. mean, it's nothing. But we've just been so busy, though. I mean, but, we've just been doing other things. But I really think that's a big part of it. Just, yeah, uh, it could very well be. Although we don't scientifically know if that's true. Uh, right. It just seems. And then the other thing is, like we said, we've been away so much. Our stores had extended handling time. Yes. Where it will make our handling time be like 30 business days. Yeah, like well, the the beginning of our trip, it was 30 business days. And then every 10 days, I would bring it down. Right. And that's business days. So that's like yeah. 45 actual yeah, it's days. Yeah, crazy. So actually, we should be very thankful yeah. and amazed that we've been able to continue to sell as much as we have. Yeah. But it does feel like our store, it used to be a much more powerful engine you know i mm-hmm. felt like we had the store and it was just, it was just like cha-ching cha-ching it was like and i feel like yeah we've kind of let it it's it's like having a car we've kind of let it like maybe not been working on it as much as <laughs> well we, should, we yeah you know? but the good thing is is we're home now so yeah and i heard something from someone who i live with which is jay what happened <laughs> who said he might want to Get back to listing with me. Oh, that's oh, true. So that might happen. Yeah, when when Ryan and I had a big fight one time, I was like, "Well, let me help you list." Yeah. <laughs> and now you have to hold true to it. Yeah. No, I think you could. I think that. Well, you used to write listings, and then I would list them. But right. Really, once you know how, if we can double our efforts. Right. I mean, look. I mean, just so people know. It's not because, like, I don't want to list or... Hmm. Why is it, then? You like to do things a certain way. Yeah, sure. Uh, No, that's true. I mean, we talked about this before. This eBay store was kind of your store. Right. In the the very early days, because I didn't know anything about eBay. Yeah. I would help you buy stuff, but you would sell stuff. Yeah. And I've had to kind of, you know... Get my way into the store. Like, sure. Let me take that, pictures. And we were, you know, breaking up the work. Right, so, right. So this is just another part of our evolving. I mean, you know, if we can double list. Right. Like this week. Right. I mean, we would get so much done. Right. It would be crazy. So I think that would be a good boost for the store. Yeah. So we can try. Good. Yeah. I would be excited about that. Good. So you hear that, everyone? I would be excited. <laughs> I would be excited about that. Yeah. Just going back to our uh, numbers, though, I just I just always have to be clear that talking about the numbers is so important because it, uh, for us at least, yeah. it makes, or, or for me, it makes me feel more uh, safe. You know, mm-hmm. it's when I know our numbers and the numbers make sense, I just feel safe. I sleep better at night. Yeah. You know, and I remember like being a kid and my parents used to scream at each other. And it, most of the time they were arguing about, about money. money. Yep. And I just remember they would like shut their door and they would just start yelling because they just, it's like, and I, and I also remember as I grew older and they would kind of talk to us in a separate ways that they each had like... A, 
a money that they hid from each other. Yeah. Like, it's my dad had, like, a secret account because he was afraid <laughs> my mom was going to spend it. And my mom had a money that she always wanted to have. So if she wanted to buy something, she yeah, could do she it. Yeah, she could. Like, yeah, yeah. It's such a, uh, you know, I never heard my parents talk about goals or, like, yeah. what they were trying to accomplish. I mean, I guess it was just the obvious thing. Let's just get through this. Right, know? right. Like we have three kids. Right. Let's just get through our kids. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's... I have a similar thing with my parents before before they got divorced, where they were not clear with money, you know, all kinds of stuff. Like, I don't even want to go down that road. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, I heard fights, many fights right. about money. Right. Um, people hiding money from each other, people spending money on huge things and not telling each other. Right. Although I did kind of do that this week. <laughs> I bought a few presents for you. Yeah. Those were good. <laughs> those were good. I bought Jay a laptop and some fancy headphones. Yeah. But that for me, those things are like what we need to run our business. So, But you did scavenger style where yes. you made... Uh, you, you made made uh, offers on both offers of them. And, and yeah. got them dirt cheap. Incredible. Yeah, I bought a... So we have a laptop, but I have an iMac. But when we're traveling, both of us don't have a laptop. Right. So I was like, we need a cheap MacBook Air. Especially if we're both going to a list at the same right, time. Right, exactly. So that was a total make offer. But it's like, I just cheap. I just talked to, it's my dad on the phone, and he retired a couple of years ago. And, you know, it's funny. My dad kind of, he's kind of like a surprised <laughs> his yeah. life now that he's in the final stretch you know i'll always ask him about like you know what his plans are now like he can do yeah. anything you know, right. he's worked hard he's doing pretty good for himself but right he seems really he doesn't like really he doesn't know. know what to do yeah and i think he's actually a surprise he doesn't have as much money as he thought he's gonna have as he was like a professor so yeah it's like that pension and the pension took a hit and you know it's yeah. just I just think, I, I, I hope in our lives as we grow older that there's no it's mystery right. to what's happening. Yeah. To how much money we have, to what we want to do, right. to what we're able to do. You know? Yeah. And so that's why every week we spend a lot of time talking about our numbers on this podcast. I mean, hopefully it helps other people. But yeah. I, I, I almost like, I feel like we're doing it just between ourselves. So yeah. It, do you know how it's we did? And, uh, it's good because I I pay attention to much different things, right. and I think that's actually good. It, it's it's helpful to have a partner who is obsessive about the numbers and keeping track. And I'm I'm better at other kind of details, you yeah. know, so. like listing, like listing, yeah. like shipping, yeah, yeah, like shipping. So how many things did I ship? Was it? It's fifty things. It was it was over fifty because yeah. we sold stuff as we were coming home. But we're going to talk about oh, okay. That, so. But but that's that's my details, you know. But to just kind of round out the uh, uh, it's numbers thing. I mean, there was a, an anonymous commenter on our blog this week, and we allow anonymous commenters, and yeah, you know, that can be hit or miss just because if people aren't coming with good intentions, it can be yeah ugly. But so, so far, the community has been great. Uh, but you know, he was like questioning some people's it's, it's numbers and I get that. Yeah, it's good sure. to be skeptical, especially if you're on it's YouTube where, you know, there's a lot of these it's videos yeah. where they title it like, you know, <laughs> I spent $50 and I'm going to make $5,000, yep. you know, and then the numbers just feel very boastful right? and they don't seem grounded in, uh, in, uh, it's reality. So, well, also a lot of people are like you're saying, they're talking about their gross numbers, and I've even seen people include the shipping. And right. I'm like, that, you didn't make that money. That money is right. gone the minute you get it. And or it's like, you know, they go to Goodwill and they get like a car full of stuff. Yeah. And then they just kind of like put it on the floor and they're like, that's going to be $5,000. But there's yeah. so much between A to point B. And right. There's all that a listing, not everything sells right away. I yeah. mean, there's a, you know, there's so much work in between. Yeah, and 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 the other thing, uh, I think a lot of, especially on in YouTube, it seems very Amazon heavy these days, and people can gross a lot of right, money on Amazon. on Amazon, where they'll even put up their little screenshots of the yeah. Amazon store, you know, and they'll say like, you know, I sold twenty five thousand dollars this month. Which seems amazing, but, but the fees. Well, it's the fees, but also you know people are paying a lot for inventory, especially right. on Amazon. Right. So, so for instance, you know the blog. One of the blogs I really love 
It's Ryan Grant over at the online selling experiment. I'll put a link to it. He just put a post up today from one of his buddies. And, uh, you know, his buddy says he has a goal to sell $100,000 gross on Amazon. And it looks like he may do that. Just in total? Just yeah. since he started? Totally. Okay. You know, Not per month? No, for, for, for 12 months. For, for a uh, year. Yeah, okay. For, for the year Okay, 100000 Gross, right? But but see, that's why I that's why I like this blog is because then they break it down and then they say, okay, so that's my gross, and then he says, so I'll net about thirty five thousand right. dollars over the entire you know two thousand fourteen. Okay, so that's after fees and his inventory. Yeah. So really, he's only he's making less than three thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Which I guess is better than working flipping burgers or working a shitty job but that i think is a more it's real holistic image of what a lot of people are it's doing yeah you know and yeah this is a full-time amazon yeah like a hundred thousand dollars seems amazing but when you break it down what are you really putting in your pocket you know so you could sell a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff on Amazon, it only make like thirty five k a year. Well, I mean, think about that. So let's just say, I mean, why don't we say it's a hundred dollars and he's making thirty five? I mean, right. you know, very often I see people talk about, you know, they buy something for ten dollars right. and sell it for twenty. Right. So half of that its money is just him buying the inventory. Right. Exactly. And then Amazon takes fees, especially if it's FBA. Yeah. You have to ship storage, it there. Ship, the yeah. Storage. When it sells, you have to pay for the, uh, the shipping. shipping. Yeah. If you have eBay put on the uh, oh, barcode, the Amazon, yeah, and Amazon put on the barcode, all that stuff. And you know, and then I think there's some kind of final value kind of right. thing. And then, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of fees. Yeah. But then again, you know, Amazon FBA is obviously nice because they just yeah they do everything. Stuff. Yeah, but exactly. Again, I just think that's when these are the things that any of us should ask. If you're watching a video or not ask, but you should try and find, you know, yeah, and maybe gravitate towards those people who are being a little more transparent. Yeah, because, uh, I think so. I mean, and the other thing, too, is what would be the point of us inflating numbers? Like, I I have nobody to impress. <laughs> who am I going to impress? Like, other people who sell stuff on eBay? I mean, yeah. Like, I, I guess I so. There's, like, a community out there, and, you know, people want to be hustlers and they want to like have empires and they want to uh, yeah you know they're they're like building businesses yeah and, like, i just want to be able to pay my bills yeah I th- like I, I mean, that's cool yeah we talked about it i actually i listened to one of our old podcasts today i do that sometimes yeah <laughs> like before we Nostalgia. do uh, this podcast i like try to get myself in the mood and like, yeah uh I was listening to our mom and pop episode. Oh, yeah. Which was actually a while ago. A year ago. ago. <laughs> yeah. There were only like, it was back when we were only getting like 16 comments. Like <laughs> now it's like, like a 160 comments. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's just like that whole, our approach is more the mom and pop. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, like this podcast is to document what we're doing in our lives. And like eBay, our goal is just to make enough to yeah. where we pay all of our bills we would like to have a little bit extra because right. we like to do little Other projects, things. but it's really so we can live this life. And, and have our time. And not be wage slaves. Yep, exactly. Break the bonds. Um. <laughs> Let's break down those numbers about what we sold. So this week okay. we sold super random things. Yes. So we only sold 31 items. Okay. So we averaged about $42 hey, or so. Pretty good. You know, an item. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, uh, we were selling actually some of my sleeping bags. Yep. Like, those have been selling. I think that was two years ago. Was when, it two years ago? When I was still, maybe a year and a half when yeah. I was still, I was buying these a military, uh, like big. Like lots. Military lots of, bulk. Yeah, <laughs> of uh, military stuff. And I bought a big thing of sleeping bags. These uh, military sleeping bags. They're awesome. Yeah. I paid about $900 for about 50 of them. Was it 50? I thought there were more. No. Really? I mean, it's, it seemed like more. And, you know, we'll probably, at the end of the day, we'll pay $900, we will gross about 3000 So yeah. maybe we'll make about 2000 But yeah. it's taken... A long time. Almost two years Basically, to we're, sell like, just trying these. to get rid of them. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's just one of those things where it's just, you know, that's a good example of, like, I could have just said, look... 
I made two thousand dollars right away. But right. the it's reality is it's been trickling in forever. You know? Yeah, it took forever. But they're they're you know it's nice sales. Like yeah, they're yeah. fifty dollar. We have yeah. them at fifty dollars each. So and then you know just selling like some jackets and just yeah a lot of just random like artwork and knickknacks you know? just random stuff right. it's really interesting um but yeah. i mean i'm sure other people can appreciate this i mean sometimes when we sell something we've had in our store for a while it's almost a really sweet sale. yeah because, because you're like, like oh good <laughs> like i never thought this would sell yep. like, i'm so happy yep. you know exactly so that's the kind of week we've had yeah like, it's nothing really a wow but like today which is monday yep because we're a little bit late this week yeah uh, which doesn't count for our last week's its numbers we've made Almost five hundred dollars just today. We, yeah, we sold like nine items. Yeah, so. we had some high priced fabric, several high priced fabrics sold. Yeah, some jewelry. Some jewelry you know. sold. I mean, through no I amazement mean, it just of our happened, own. It's you just, know. Yeah, I want every day to be like this, so, but it's not. I don't know. Yeah, like I just remember we had a December two years ago. Oh we my had god, a December where I think we grossed. Like thirteen thousand dollars. It was crazy. It was I remember we would have we would have ever. days where we would make a thousand dollars in one day. It yeah. was just like I really hope that happens again. Yeah. I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I but mean, I guess just like anyone that works in a retail, it's just you have good years, you have bad years. I mean, we'll see. It just you can't control it. So you've been packing so yep. so we got home and we had about what 50 items to pack yeah it was like i think it was like 55 because stuff had sold and mm-hmm. then stuff sold today so i was packing we got home saturday night um i packed all day sunday we had something to do in the evening so i couldn't pack then and then i packed all day today and i packed a bunch before the letter carrier came and she picked up stuff and then i just kept packing and i finished yeah there's a few things i have to get at the other house the storage but 50 items big deal i mean it did it took 2 days straight because Com- compared to 200 items oh my god uh, because yeah. 200 items well it's interesting cuz 200 items took me four four and a half days straight right and then 50 took two, two days. days. Right. Um, some of it was, there was a bunch of artwork. There right. was this, like, fireplace screen. That took me, like, you know, whatever, 45 minutes to... No, it didn't take that. It took yeah. about half an hour to pack something like that, yeah. you know? And it's just... Yeah. So but, it takes time. Yeah, but I feel like you've been working out those uh, muscles, like, oh, you know, the, uh, you know, the uh, muscles to a ship. Yeah. It's it's fine. I mean, I like selling when we're away, but it definitely is. And, and then it gets stressful when customers, like there's one customer who is not in the country. He's like, you didn't ship this. Why don't you hurry up already? Like really rude. Although, I wasn't rude back. Right. But <laughs> Although we sh- uh, shipped it right when we said we did. Yeah, we, we, right we, on the in, day. We, we said we'll ship on October 27th. 7th, and that's, that's today. That's today. But, and it went out this morning. But, you know, he emailed us early in the morning. Literally, like, I was just waking up. Yeah. And he's like, he's overseas, so oh, they already so, had their day, right. pretty much. But I wanted to be like, dude, it's 9 a.m. here. Yeah. But I don't care. I just packed it and sent him his, his tracking number. I'm like, here it is. And, you know, I guess, so let's talk about customers, you know, customer issues. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we had several more people return things. From that big... From the big 200 right. item. So really, I think it was probably about 10 items now out of 200. And it was all clothes. Yeah. It mainly, was all... It, mainly clothes. Oh, and, and then a one, like, bag, that bag. Oh, that it was a bag, jewelry. yeah. But it's it's funny because I was thinking about it the other day, and I'm like, oh, my God, we have so many returns. And I'm like, if you cut down selling clothes... I feel like you'll get less returns yeah. because it's it's item doesn't fit. Yeah, like that's you know, all it is. Like one guy bought two coats from us and he sent them both, both back, back because. But you know he but he paid to he paid the shipping. shipping both ways. It's just I think just when we did that big ship out and yeah. then they then ten things came back. Come back I, at once. I think we gave back about eight hundred dollars. So it was really tough on some days when they'd be real slow, and then we get these returns oh. and it almost like. 
we would barely be even for the yeah. day because of uh, that. But that was tough. But the good thing is, all the items that came back were like high quality items, and they'll sell again. Yeah. So now one, we, one thing did sell again: a pair yeah, of boots. True. I had to unwrap it and then pack it from yep. the return. So now we get, did get one more. It's neutral feedback. So so that's three neutral feedbacks we yeah. got in the past month, and she even said. It took a long time to, to ship. ship. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. We're not going to be negative here, but let's just be honest. So, Ryan calls eBay. Yep. And says, what, like, uh... I said my handling time was set to, you know, 30 business days. I shipped on time. I shipped when I said. But they wouldn't, they wouldn't change it. Um, right. now this is the reason. I will be honest. She, like, the day before I was going to ship, like, it was the day we got home... She was like, I just want to cancel this order. And I said, I'm shipping this tomorrow. If you can wait, you know, it's going to get to you on Wednesday. And then she never wrote back. She never wrote back. So I sent them to her. She didn't want to return, whatever. Right. So they read that message right. and said, we won't. Right. She's like, you have to cancel it with your customer. So hmm. that, basically, the customer was justified. And right. she was. Right. But still. Well, it's just, I, you know, I guess it's just, it's tough because... I get it. 30 days is a long time a long to wait time. for an item. But I feel like if we're transparent yeah, and we send them a message and it says it on the eBay yeah, the shipping calculator, yeah. like it's, uh, you know, it's like they're entering into a contract. Right. But you know what? Nothing you can do. Big deal. It's neutral feedback. It's not good. It's not bad. Yeah. It's whatever, you know. It's just one of those things I kind of just wish... I asked this on the blog a couple times, and I haven't really gotten a good answer about Amazon, you know? Uh, Do do people who sell on Amazon obsess about (laughs) feedback and stars and points and, and, you know, customer feedback? Like, Uh, uh, I feel like eBay is a lot about the customer service and dealing with all that stuff. And on Amazon, you know, I see a lot of people get, like, a lot of its returns. Right. I just don't, and I don't know if Amazon has that infrastructure, like... The interaction. Like, do people, do people who sell on Amazon, are they always calling Amazon and talking to them? (laughs) I don't think so. I feel like Amazon just has this thing where they're, they're there's like, eat it, you know? It's like, it's a return. Yeah, like... This person returned this. It's broken. You just got to eat it and tough, tough crap, you know? You know what's funny, though? I will mention I bought a, a necklace. It's a chain for a necklace. I wanted a shorter one. I had an 18-inch chain, and I wanted a 16-inch chain, and I got it. And it was like the perfect chain, except it was 18 inches. Mm. So I looked on their thing, and I was like, it said 16 inches. They had hassle-free returns. I did item not as described wow. and I did the return yeah. because it was true. I measured it with a ruler. Yeah. I measured it against the chain that I do have, which is 18 inches. It couldn't have been easier. Mm. That's the thing. If I didn't like it and I wanted to return it, I wouldn't have ma- made them pay shipping. But I was like, this is not as described. I didn't even have to talk to the people. Right. So it is the like turning into Amazon where I was like, I don't have to deal with them. I don't have to explain to them why I think it's 18 inches, not 16. I just returned it. So I think that's what it is. It's like, you don't want to have to deal with the customer or whatever. Like the customer doesn't want to have to. Right. But, but I mean, I guess, you know, it's my point is, is that eBay still has a whole infrastructure. You know, I feel like that's one of the, the things that keeps other companies out of it is that there's, you know, eBay has all this customer service. Yeah. You know, they have probably a thousand employees that just answer the phones. Right. I in Amazon, I I just don't feel like, you know, people do the hassle free stuff. But there's no one. I'm not sure. People can tell me. Yeah. Does a seller have to fight for good feedback, right. or do they just be like, yeah, you know? I don't know. Yeah, I would love to know. It's such a different. It's so weird. It's such a different world. Two different worlds. Right. Our week this week, and this is, this is, it's for us. I'm looking into your eyes, right? I'm not going to look at you. <laughs> yeah. So it's this week we're home for hopefully two months. Yeah. We, we may be traveling again at the beginning of the year, but yeah. let's right. just focus on the next couple of months. And our hope is yeah. to get back into eBay. Yeah. You know? To list. You know, I, I feel like this is the moment that I feel like I've I've heard a lot of people have with their stores where they have a store, they're selling, it's cool, and then they get busy. They have another kid, they, they 
do something anything. happens, you know, someone gets sick, uh, they get involved in something else. Yeah. And their eBay store just kind of like peters out. And then three years later, they're like, I used to sell on eBay. Yeah, Maybe but, I'll start again. And so yeah. this is that moment for us. We could either say, ah, you know, we had these other things going on. Let's just forget about eBay. But we're not going to do that. But we're we gonna... can't. I mean, we, we actually can't do right. that because we have to make money every month. Right. I mean, the other things that we might do might make us money, but not in a steady way like this. Right. So This is, you know, our commitment. Like, we have to. Like, this is it. We're going to really try and buckle down and yeah. do it these next couple yeah. months. I'm I mean, looking at you, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like, I'm looking right now. Like, we have all of our uh, summertime booty that has piled up oh, in our gosh. house. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of photos to take. But then, you know, I've been... I've been doing good with photos all summer. Oh my summer god! Long. I have folders upon you, folders. You upon probably folders. have about fifty folders of you know each one them. with between twenty and forty items in yeah. it that are ready to be. That's why I was enlisted. like, we need to hire someone because <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah. But I really think even if we just took a week, you know, you help me for a week listing yeah. could list so much stuff. I mean, I'm good like that. Like I just oh, I feel like up. I'm just like. I'm like an initiator, you know. I'm like, <laughs> an I'm like an igniter. Like people oh. just bring me in, and I just ignite the situation. You ignite yourself on fire, <laughs> is what you do. You burn yourself I'm, to a I'm crisp. Glad to, especially. I feel like the way I imagine it is, we'll be in the, you know, we'll drink coffee, we'll be at our kitchen table. I'll be on one side, you'll be on the other. We'll both have our laptops. We'll put on the uh, radio, and we'll just like listen. We can. Because, you know, I'll have a lot of questions. I'll and, be know. done. I'm done packing. So, Good. I mean, obviously I'll pack when stuff sells. Good. You know, but yeah. I love that. Yeah. Communication, Ryan. It, this week in the comments, again, have been really good. Yeah. In that, uh, at the blog. Uh, you know, we did that interview with Steve during the week. He, yeah. was, he was nice enough to be real flexible. It's with his schedule, and we did it. And we got a, got a, a lot of good it's response because, you know, Steve always posts his numbers to the blog. He always does, and his numbers are amazing. He's got great numbers, and, you know, he was, he was the one where people weren't really thinking that what he was saying was true. <laughs> I just think he's a good example of, like, you know, a good real scavenger. Yeah. Meaning that, you know, he sees... The value of things yeah. out in the world, and he does it full time. Yeah, this isn't like you know, I'm spending a Saturday or two no, hours here. It's two hours every there. day. It's like you know, he was talking about it. He like gets his list of uh, yard sales, and he goes there Wednesday. Yep, Thursday. He knows Friday, his stuff. Saturday, and I wonder if it's because he's in South Dakota. I wonder if he doesn't have as much competition. You know? Yeah, it might be. Yeah, but that could be true. You know, I, uh, I mean, I still am. A sucker for buying the dollar items that's only going to sell for I know. twenty or thirty. It's so hard not to. He seems like he really. I don't know if he has the willpower. Yeah. Or he goes I, or high. He is willing to spend the twenty dollars on the item. He'll sell for four twenty to fifty dollars you know. on a fancy stereo system. Yeah. People think, oh yeah, he paid fifty bucks for that. He's going to sell for five hundred dollars right. this week. Yeah. You know that. That is his method, you know. And I like how he talked about and I'm surprised is no one commented about this. I think it was the most genius part of what he said was he'll go to the bank and he'll ask for two dollar <laughs> bills. bills. I didn't even know that they still gave I didn't out. even I didn't either. But he says when he goes to yard sales that people will often sell it to him for cheaper because they want, they want a two dollar bill. bill. So awesome. I want my two dollars yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And I think it is true, like we were talking about on the blog, that putting 40 hours a week or being full-time yep. doing eBay is really the way you jump from yep. kind of being a hobby seller to the real deal. Right. Like, if you're part-time, it's just, yeah, I mean, we've been, I mean, we know this. Yeah. If it's part-time, that's all your store is Yeah, it's gonna just, be, you're you know? going to make part-time money. I mean, it's, you know, like we always say, it's about... The numbers that you list, but it's also the hours that yeah. you put into it. Yeah, you know? exactly. And it was also interesting, people were talking about auctions. You know, we're not really into auctions, but some people were saying, like, auctions to them are the last it's resort after they've uh, researched an item. Yeah. And, they, and yep. they can't find out anything about mm. it. It's just like one of those really weird, rare items. The auction is the way 
they do it because... They just don't know. Is it worth $10? Is it worth $1,000? They let the market yeah. figure it out. And that's, you know... Yeah, yeah. That can, can work that. for sometimes. Yeah, I mean, if people... But again, if people are willing to gamble because it might only sell for right. what they put it up for. You right, know? exactly. And then I liked how Kate was talking about... Uh, you know, she uh, sells a lot of art. You know, we were, yes. we were talking about art and she's talking about, you know, little specialty items. And in, and it is true that people forget about eBay is that there's a, there's a part of eBay and, and uh, we do this as well, where people will buy things at a really high price. Yes. Because they're looking for quality and specialty stuff. Yep. You know, and it's unlike the Amazon model where everyone's trying to find the yep. lowest price, right. push it down, volume. Yep. I mean, I really feel like that's our a market, and that's really the eBay. Its market is yeah. That, you know, you know there are seller, there are buyers out there that are willing to pay top dollar for things because they want that a very that particular thing. Particular, yeah. I mean, it's. I was looking at some lighting, just thinking of some lights that I might replace that we never had fancy lights for. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm going to pay, uh, I will make an offer for stuff, but I'm going to pay a higher price for a true vintage light that's unique and exactly what I want, as opposed to looking at, you know, rejuvenation or restoration hardware, where that light costs $500 and like, you know, a thousand other people have that light. Right. So it's, you know, they're very particular audiences for stuff like this. Or, or a versus, you know, the people that just... Will go online and they just buy like a a Walmart or like a a Lowe's light, right? And exactly. they just pay you know twelve bucks for it. Like, right? You're willing because it's important to you to have like a beautiful a look, light yeah. on the wall, right? And you're willing to pay seventy five bucks for that, right? You know? I mean, that's why when we sell a lamp or a painting or whatever. We're like, I can't believe someone paid $150 for that lamp. And then you're like, but it's the only one right. online. And we know that designer lights, yeah. for instance, sell for a lot of money. Th sometimes thousands of dollars. Right. I've seen brand new chandeliers, you know, not even fancy big ones, little ones, $1,200, yep. $1,500. Yep. It's one light. Right. That's that's my mortgage payment, yeah. you know? So And I, they pay that much. So I... So I think that is interesting, and I think Kate brought up a really good point, because that is something that I think really separates people who kind of love selling on eBay versus people that love selling on Amazon. Yeah. You know, it's just like, yeah, you know, if you aren't really into finding those little specialty items, yeah, it's sell on Amazon. You know, right. like, if you're just going to sell stuff that can sell on Amazon, it sounds like a great yeah. a system, you know? Right. The other thing for me, too, about Amazon... I've said it a million times. I'm just not interested in selling that kind of bulk stuff. Like, I like to find weird, quirky, yeah. one of a kind. I could literally be the only one online that has this yeah. item. Or a handful of other people do. To me, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I It's a treasure. I mean... Yeah. I think what you mean or the, feel, the feeling I get is like, I love going to that yard sale or the estate yeah. sale or the auction... And there's like a whole pile of junk, <laughs> and I love to find yeah. the little items in there that people who are selling them don't understand what their don't value care at. what their value is. And you know, I might not even know what it's worth, right. but I have a feeling it looks special. It feels special. And what Steve said, you know, someone else is going to yeah. think it's cool too. Exactly. It's not just you, right. you know. And that's definitely not the Amazon right. market, you know. Right. But, uh, you know, that's. It's good. People can do it's both. It's just a different model. It's Whatever. just different. Yeah. I'm I'm staring at this vintage like 1970s crock pot that we yeah. have. It's not ours, but we're going to sell it. And it has this brick pattern on it, which is like so 70s. Like yeah. I think we had that fake brick in our kitchen yeah. like when I was a little kid. Um, and my parents tore it down because it was horrifying. And, and but I think we bought that for more than a couple bucks and it'll sell for 70. You know? Oh, Easily, I hope we get a hundred dollars for that because it's so seventies, like yeah. it's so retro, and and I think we, yeah, I think we paid like two bucks for it, and yeah. I love stuff like that because you're like that just is so like quintessential right. early seventies, and, and then right, so right now we're yeah like <laughs> checking out our pile of death so that we have to do. Stuff. There's this light; it's like a hanging oh my god light, and it's like a 
piece of pottery, like a glazed it's ceramic, pottery. yeah, ceramic, it's like, and it's like a, a south, a western style with like a. It's got like Native American figures on it. It's so cool, and then on the inside, it's like orange on the it, inside, orange glazed. I know. I bought that for five dollars. I'm, put, I'm putting $200 yep. on that. There's no way. I mean, yep. this thing is awesome. It will make a whole room. Yep. Like, that will make the room. But I look at that stuff, and that makes me excited. Yeah. You know? Like, I'm excited to take a picture of yeah. it. Yeah. And be, I'll, I'll it, it someone's going to gonna find it. it. Yeah. Like, someone's going to find it and be like, I need that, yeah. you know? So, you know, I'm sure there might be some people out there like, that's the weirdest thing to get excited about. <laughs> but, you know, it's... I mean, yeah. again, I think... When we talk about sale on eBay, we're talking about a certain kind of approach. Yeah. A certain kind of scavenging. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. Uh, you know, we do still, like, if we're somewhere and there's, like, some newish object, we definitely grab that, too, if the yeah. price is right. Right. But, totally. Uh, but we do love finding those weird, quirky, yeah. vintage yep. things. They're they're fun. Cool. So uh, let's answer some of the questions that people have emailed us in or at scavengeratlife.com. We have uh, on the sidebar, there's like a little form and you can send a question in to us. But obviously, like what we say, if you really want an answer right away, just go into the blog and just ask a question to the to everyone and people will help us answer that. But uh, we'll answer what people have sent in today. Okay, so Billy says, um, have either of you ever had seller's remorse due to either getting rid of something you really, really liked or finding that you could have made more if you sat on it a little longer? I don't think so. I mean, usually we're like, if something sat for a long time with a high price and hasn't sold and someone gives us a pretty decent offer, we're like, great, yeah. sell it quick. Yeah, I mean, and it, 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 we've sold thousands of items. I think there's one thing I wish I hadn't sold. It was this jacket. It was like this vintage, like, Scottish wool jacket. It fit me so perfectly. Oh, really? And I kind of wish oh, yeah. I had kept it. But yeah. other, other than that, I, I mean, mean, we we aren't the kind of people that get attached to, to things. stuff like that. I mean, we, we do keep some things. We mainly keep a lot of artwork. Yeah. But we just don't sell that stuff. You yeah. Know? I mean, we know when we want to keep something and when we want to sell the thing. And like you said, I mean, we never sell something and then be like, oh, we could have gotten so much more. I mean, there's a couple of things that we definitely could have got more on. But we know at the time we did the best we could. Yeah. I mean, there like, have been some some rugs that I sold. The first rug that I sold, the Persian rug. I mean, I sold it for like $85 in like five minutes. And I thought, damn, you know, I and it was in horrible shape. Right. It, it was, I mean, I could, I, I it was thought, torn the, and... I mean, I thought the price that I was putting on it was absurd. But 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 that experience taught us to we always get Persian rugs. So it was a good experience. We also we had this really fancy lamp, and oh, we God. actually didn't know how fancy it was. It was the d- designer lamp, and we sold it for like almost eight hundred dollars. I think it was nine hundred dollars we sold it. For. But we realized later that we probably could have sold it for fifteen hundred. Yeah. But you know what? That experience though also taught us about selling lamps. It taught us taught us about how to uh, ship big yeah. things. So you know, it was a learning experience. Yeah. So so I think that's a, that's a thing. I would only get mad at myself like if I made the same error again and again. Yeah. But I mean, we learn pretty quickly from situations like that. Every a lesson is expensive, as they say. Devo. Okay, so Devo1320 says, have you ever considered wrapping after listing? And what I think they mean is, you know, packing something up after listing. It's a good it's question. And when we first started, yeah, I remember, I was like, Ryan, why don't we just like pack <laughs> this stuff right after we do it? So that way when it sells, you just take off the shelf. Right. I mean, this makes sense if you have 100 items. Right. Because, you know, then you have 100 little packages for us, there is absolutely no way we could have 3,400 items packed. packed. And, and plus, we, people ask questions about things right, all the time. Right. And you'd have to unpackage them. I mean, and plus, it, it, you'd really have to have a good a system to organize it. It's almost like we would have to have like an Amazon warehouse yeah. where there's like a grid and there's like a number and a letter a system. and I mean, I mean, the way we find things is visual. Right. We have a box full of jewelry or whatever, eyeglasses, 
And I go through, you know, the box, and I'm like, here's the yeah. one I need. I mean, the, the way we store things is, yeah, in plastic tubs. So it will be like a plastic tub, and there might be a hundred things in that tub. Right. Unpacked. If we pack them all, I could maybe only fit eight things yeah, in it's, there. It's, so it's just not a reasonable idea, although it logically makes sense. Sure. If, if someone can figure out for themselves how to do that, that's great. But with our storage and our way of doing things... We can't do it. It, it doesn't make sense for us. So Rachel asks, how do you decide the value of art? And she kind of tells a story about how she's trying to sell a piece of art online and someone wants to buy it from her, but the person says they're a seller and <sighs> they're trying to get a cheaper price because they say at her price they can't resell, resell the it. thing. <laughs> but she's you know. reselling it. And yeah. so, and she's asking the good thing, the, the good, it's a question of what's the value of art, you know? Right. How do you know if something's worth 100 or $400? And we actually talked about it on the blog all of it's this week and we did a podcast about it as well. Yeah, we can link to that. Yeah, and I mean, the answer is, is... You know, the value of art is all perception, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, we go into places and people are selling this art for like pennies on the dollar, right. you know? And no one thinks it's worth anything. And then we get it and then we sell it to someone. Someone else for $150. Right. And so we found the person that feels that it's important. And yeah. really, the value of art is just whatever it you think you can get for it how long you're willing to sit on it and how well you uh, research and present it. Right. You know, I find that art sells well if you take a lot of really good pictures and you try to describe it in a way yeah. that makes it more special than just saying like, I found this piece of junk in the corner. Yeah. Why don't you buy it? You <laughs> yeah. know, no, you know, you're like, this was handmade. It's like, it's made out of a wool or you right. know, it's an oil painting by a person from 1959. You right. know, it's like, Anything, so when someone reads it, they can make some emotional connection right, to that exactly. thing. I mean, it, 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 it's perceived value, like right. we say. I mean, what makes a Van Gogh worth $30 million? I don't know. Someone thinks it's worth that much. Yeah. That's how much they're willing to pay for it at auction. Right. Or whatever, $300 million, whatever like, the price is. We sold a really beautiful piece of art this week. We bought it for a dollar, and it sold for like $75. And it was like a, a wool, like hand... Like a needlepoint, right. cruel And it was thing. like a, a Jewish, like, uh, kind of scene. Like Yeah, it was like, it, it had like a little, um, a lion and a lamb. I don't know, like, what the right. story is behind it. And it said, Shalom. Yeah. But it, it was, was awesome. It was so, the beautiful colors and just, it really is like a one of a kind piece. Yeah. And that's why. It someone, sold for $80. Yeah. And that's why someone would buy something like that because they land on it and they're like, this would be a special present for someone. Yeah. Like, I'm not just pulling just one of a million items off of a store, you know, off of a shelf in Walmart and give right. it to someone. I'm giving someone a very special Like item. a handmade. Right. Yeah. It's, so. it, that is a cool piece. Okay, Karen in Atlanta says, do you always leave feedback for your buyers or do you wait until they leave you feedback first? What if they leave you negative or neutral feedback, but they paid promptly and did everything right? Do you still leave them positive if they leave you negative? I used to wait a long time ago. Now I don't have time. I sell thousands of things a year. So I have it set to automatically, when they pay, I leave them positive feedback. Most huge sellers do that. We just have like a standard like great buyer. You yeah, know? like prompt payment, great buyer. And, you know? you know, I think this is a good it's question, but eBay is really kind of like mess with the equation. So it doesn't really matter because you aren't allowed to leave negative feedback for a buyer. Yeah, and, you can't. And even if you leave positive feedback, but if you say something is negative in the uh, text, eBay can take that down. Yeah. So it's really like you aren't allowed to say anything negative about the buyer because eBay, you know, back in the day, buyers and sellers, it was a little bit yeah. hostile. Yeah. You know, I it mean, it could be hostile. If you go on the eBay community of forums, there are some sellers out there, like, they're out for blood. So. Yeah. <laughs> You know when they were able to leave negative feedback. It, I mean, that they were, happened, yeah. And you know, and there were stories of buyers feeling, you know, a threatened. It was like retali retaliation. Retaliation. You know? They they would leave. Oh, you left me negative feedback. I'm leaving you negative feedback. Like, it's and, so and you know, and that's not a healthy place for, you know, people to buy and sell things. So really, we just make the best of it. If someone 
pays for it, they get positive feedback. And then we just hope that they give us positive feedback. And if we get a neutral or a negative, you know, oftentimes we'll call eBay if we don't think it's fair. But other than that, we just eat it. Like that's I mean, just, there's, you have no control. Yeah. And I'm assuming if you're asking this, maybe you're a new person selling on eBay or maybe if you have a small store and you're you know worried about getting good feedback and trying to get your uh, numbers up. But really, just focus on selling. Yeah. And just if you do get it's neutral or negative feedback, it happens to everyone and you just dilute it with sales. Yeah. Just dilute defects and all that stuff with good sales. Okay. Cherie in North Carolina says, I've been including best offer in my listings, but it seems all I get offered are really low ball prices. Um, it really does not seem worth it. What's your philosophy <laughs> on the issue? Welcome to best offer. Yeah, you get low ball. But you know what? Here's the thing. I only put best offer... Right now, I only put best offer on things that I don't feel confident on the price because right. a lot of times I'm like, this is totally worth 40 bucks. That's it. Well, we have a, I mean, we kind of have a rule in if you have a store and you can do a bulk, and you can do it by, by the, the bulk tool yes. where we say best offer on anything $50 or more. Or more, yeah. So that way, if something is. F- it's fifty dollars or more. We're glad to entertain and offer because we have the it's profit price so high right. that if someone offers us thirty five dollars, we might I take, might take it. it. But if someone offers me two dollars, I'm just gonna decline. But them. if you have items that are only twenty dollars or or under. There's no sense in having best offer. Right. I mean, then you're just like playing with pennies. Like, yeah. I'll give you, you know, thirteen dollars for it. Like, come on, give me twenty. Like, so yeah, exactly. I mean, I think the other thing too is if we really think about it, it's probably about one in ten offers we actually take. We get all the low ball offers too. We get the half price offers. Yeah. We get the, you know, and we'll counter offer. Uh, most people, most people, we never hear from again. Yeah. Like, it's not a back and forth. But like today, we got two really good offers. Yeah, like, I think I had one. I had a really fancy piece of fabric with a lot of you know yardage. I think I had it up for like one fifty, and they offered one twenty, and I was like, uh, "Yeah, I'm gonna take that." And then we had a piece of jewelry up for one. It's fifty, and they offered one one ten or 110, something, and we took that I'm too. Like, ah, yeah, I bought that for three dollars. I think the reason why we like offers, especially on items that are you know higher priced. Is because we like the action too. I mean, yeah. if it's a slow day, it's just nice to get any kind of offer. Because on a really slow day, we've been known to take half price yeah, offers. Yeah, because you know? I want to move stuff. Because we just want to get things going, especially if we had the items for a while. But again, I think the issue is, or the the point is, you need to have uh, high price items. If you have yeah. a low price items, it's not going to work. Uh, Diana in Houston says, does eBay slash PayPal charge the same commission on global shipping fees as they do on domestic shipping? Approximately 10%. I normally charge a flat fee for the item, say about $5 for postage, but I've noticed that the buyer was required to pay, say, about $25. How am I paying commission on those shipping fees? Now, I would have to check this, but I'm pretty sure you would only pay the 10% commission on d- the domestic shipping. Right. Um, it'd be crazy if they were charging you for the um, global shipping, international shipping. Right, because actually, we don't really see that part. That money doesn't yeah. come to us I mean, at that's, all. That's really between the person that buys it and then eBay yeah. at the global warehouse. I think they just charge you for you getting it to Kentucky. So yeah. that's the... That's my commission. that's my thought. I should check that, but I'm, that would be insane if they didn't do that. And by the way, hello, Diane in Houston. I'm from Southwest Houston. Houston Woo-hoo. in Woo-hoo. the house. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Seriously, don't do that. Why can't I do that? Because people are going to think you're a juggalo. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's funny because I'm... Because you're not one. Follow this away from being a juggalo. <laughs> Although there could be some juggalos there, I here. I think there now, probably are some out there. And now it's your insulting juggalos. I, I think you insulted them by <laughs> sounding ridiculous. Okay. Okay. So uh, Cindy uh, writes us a, uh, a story where she sold an item and the person got it. And they emailed and said they want to return it because it's broken. So uh, Cindy wrote back and said... Why don't you just keep it? Because I don't want it back because it's mm-hmm. broken. I'll give you your... 
its money back, but the person sent it back anyway, mm -hmm. and so she had to it refund all the oh, God. to a ship, and she got a broken item back, and she's just <sighs> like, well, how can I make sure the person doesn't send it back? And really, the answer is you can't. I mean, right. if the buyer chooses to mail it back to you because, I don't know, possibly she doesn't understand English well right. or just wants to send it back, that's your it's responsibility as someone that sells on eBay. Yeah. Like, um, I, you know, and we've talked about it many times. It's strange. When people buy on eBay, there's a certain segment of eBay buyers that just don't check their their messages. messages or their email. I mean, or... they, they'll buy from us and then we, we're trying to communicate properly and... They don't check them. And then they'll like email us and they're all mad because something happened that, that we had told them was going to happen. And we're like, <laughs> we sent you a message. And they're like, we never check We don't that. check those messages. Yeah. You're like, that's not my fault. So, uh, Cindy, I think you just are now yeah. being exposed to like, this is your responsibility as yeah, someone that sells on eBay. It's not the buyer's fault. It's not, it's your fault. It's just, you just have to eat it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That does happen. Yeah. Sometimes we'll be like, don't send it back. And we ch ch hope that those people read that because I don't want to pay for shipping. You know, right. I'll just refund the price. But Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for being with us this week. And hopefully you've uh, listed a lot since we've been talking. That would make us feel good. We should be listing while we're yep. listening to this. We're going to be uh, <laughs> listing, aren't we, Ryan? Yes. I'm going to show you how to list stuff. Cool. So this podcast is over in three, two. <laughs> oh, my God. You're scary. Oh! You're scaring the cats. <laughs>